Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Julius Quedium DMPH and today I come to you with another video. Uh, today we are looking at wound healing and before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe and share the video with your friends and uh, let's go into it. Wound healing and regeneration. So, uh, before we talk about what wound healing is, um, it's always good to remember that with every wound healing, before wound healing begins, you always start with inflammation. So, before the process of wound healing starts, it is always preceded by inflammation. That means there must have been a sort of damage. There must have been some violation of uh, tissues. Uh, by inflammation, which causes the formation of a wound. And then, after that formation of a wound, then wound healing and regeneration begins. And so, let me remind you a little bit about inflammation. You know the four cardinal signs of inflammation. You have rubor, which is redness. And then you have uh, dolor, which is pain. You have uh, color, which is heat or fever. And tumor, which is swelling. So, rubor dolor, color, and tumor. Those are the four cardinal signs of inflammation. And whenever there is an inflammation, whenever there is an inflammatory process, there is always an inflammatory response. So the body always launches an inflammatory response to every inflammatory uh, process. And the inflammatory response uh, is, uh, is, is exhibited or elicited against infections, Trauma, thermal injury, uh, by sunburns, for example, or uh, steam injury from steam, uh, hot steam, that is, uh, and uh, autoimmune processes as well. But there are really a lot of uh, causes of inflammation uh, to which inflammatory responses are elicited. Now, the inflammatory responses... Uh, what are the different types of inflammatory responses you have? For example, the abscess formation or granulomas formed, yeah, for example, in tuberculosis or whenever there is a bacterial infection, there is always an abscess formation. That is essentially an inflammatory response. You can also have um, uh, clotting, the clotting cascade that is, um, um, that is, that is activated whenever there is damage to the blood vessels, either uh, via the intrinsic mechanism or via the extrinsic mechanism, there's always, um, uh, uh, that is part of the inflammatory response. And another part of the inflammatory response, when you have chemotaxis and chemokines that are, chemokines that are released, which, uh, um, which elicit uh, chemotaxis of, of um, white blood cells from the circulation to the tissues, and so chemotaxis, chemokines, these are also part of the inflammatory responses. What else form uh what is what else forms part of the inflammatory response? You have necrosis when when cells are dying. Is apoptosis also part of an inflammatory response? Uh well, apoptosis by definition is programmed cell death. So when the cell, the DNA of the cell uh, has damages in the process of um, replication, DNA replication, uh, then uh, the cell, the, 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 the certain genes are switched on, certain genes are switched off, which then uh, program the cell to go down the path of apoptosis instead of, con instead of continuing to proliferate. Um, so, indeed, Apoptosis, as we said, DNA damage that could result from ionizing radiation that could damage the um, the DNA. You could also have some carcinogenic chemicals that could damage the DNA, which could, uh, 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 could which could also trigger apoptosis. Probably apoptosis is part of an inflammatory response, but necrosis surely is. Uh, you also have phagocytosis when um, um, polymorphonucleosides or macrophages, your neutrophils, when they are uh, swallowing up um, 
literally swallowing bacteria and viruses or any other material that has entered, any other foreign object that has entered into the body. Um, phagocytosis is also part of the inflammatory response. What else? Another part of inflammatory response is wound healing and regeneration. Yeah, After you have the inflammation, and then there's a formation of a wound, then wound healing kicks into motion. Uh, and um, we, we shall then focus, henceforth we'll then focus on uh, wound healing and regeneration, and we'll look at the goals of wound healing and wound healing, we'll look at the types of wound healing, we'll look at the phases of wound healing, all right? Um, now, wound healing and regeneration. Let's look at the definition of the word wound healing. What is, what does the, the, the word wound mean? What is a wound? Yeah, what is a wound? A wound is a disruption of cellular and anatomic continuity of tissue. Right? So when there's a disruption, uh, be it on the skin, be it on the epithelial layers of the GIT, be it... Um, um, yes, that's basically it, the, 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 those two layers. Um, then when there's a disruption of the cells, of the anatomic continuity, the anatomic continuity, that is disruption of the, the organs, right? The liver, the uh, different organs of the body. Then um, you have the formation of a wound. And... This can be caused by surgical cuts, can be caused by, you know, when the surgeon is deliberately cutting the skin to bring about, uh, to, you know, during the process of, a, of, a, of, a, of an operation. Mm -hmm. And this can also happen during or when there is a bite. Well, a bite can also cause a wound. What else? Thermal injury can also cause wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, motor vehicle accidents, of course, traumatic Trauma, trauma can also cause uh, uh, motor vehicle traumas can also cause wounds. Accidents that works, you know, by different machine machines, these heavy machines that fall on certain um, uh, workers, you know, really anything that is sharp that can cut through tissue and organs, you know. Infection, right? You have H. pylori that can infect uh, the that can cause that can infect the GIT the and then cause peptic ulcers, yeah? You have uh, H. pylori. You can also have vi viruses that can infect the, 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 the tissues. And then the process of tissue death necrosis can cause uh, a wound formation, fungus, you know? You, you have um, paras uh, f fungus and, yes, fungus as well as parasites that can uh, infect uh, the GIT or wherever, really, and then the burrowing mechanism of um, of the parasite can also cause a wound. So really, any damage to the um, to the any disruption of cells and anatomic continuity of a tissue can cause a wound. Now, let us look at regeneration. What does regeneration mean? Regeneration is a recovery of full structure when the entire structure is recovered right remade so the recovery of a full structure and function without formation of a scar so that is regeneration so regeneration is when the full structure of an organ or tissue are recovered are remade not only is the structure recovered, but also the function is recovered, and that without the formation of scars. And wound regeneration is usually regeneration is usually the goal of wound healing. However, as we'll see, not all wound healing results in regeneration. Of course, the objective of wound healing is um, regeneration, and this happens when the bone, when there is br the um, trauma of the bone. Yeah, and this union of the bone, liver. That's why uh, liver transplant transplantation is so successful. Is because after the patient, um, after the donor, the lobe has been removed from the donor, the 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 liver 
the lobe that has been removed grows back. Uh, skin, of course, certain parts of the skin, they grow back. They, they recover. They're fully recovered. And you will not even uh, re realize that there was a wound in that place. So certain places of the skin can also be regenerated. However, scars, scars, if the regeneration is not achieved, then scars are formed. You know, you remember the keloids, for example, keloids. Mm -hmm. um, so scarring can happen on the skin, you know, on the heart, scarring can happen, as well as on other parts of the body. Now, um, let's look at the different types of wound healing. Uh, you can have wound healing by first intention. You have three types of wound healing. You have the first intention wound healing, which is also known as primary healing. Uh, you can have uh, second intention wound healing, which is also known as secondary healing. You can have third intention wound healing, which is also called tertiary healing. Now, tertiary healing is also known as delayed primary closure. Now, look at, let's look at um, uh, primary intention. Primary intention wound healing uh, usually happens when the edges, when the edges of the wound, when the edges of the incised wound, of the cut wound, incised, that is cut, yeah? When the edges of the wound are well approximated, brought together, for example, with sutures. So when you have a surgical suturing, surgical suturing is referred to as primary healing or first intention healing. Second intention healing or secondary healing, uh, this happens when the wound is left open. The wound is left open. And then as it is left open, so meaning after the surgery, the surgeon gets in there, uh, cuts up the patient, does his, performs the operation that he intends to operate, to, to, to perform. And then instead of closing up the skin with sutures, the wound is left open. This usually happens um, um, in, in certain in certain, uh, 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 certain procedures that we shall even see later, yeah, that we shall cover later, but the wound is left open and then it is allowed to heal on its own. So the surgeon does not suture back the wound, the, the wound edges. The surgeon leaves the wound open, right? Surgeon leaves the wound leaves the wound open. All right. The third intention healing. Third intention. Third intention healing is also known as we said tertiary or delayed primary closure. Why is it delayed primary closure? Because in tertiary wound healing, the wound is the wound at first is left open, as it is in secondary wound in healing intention. Uh, secondary healing. So the wound is left open like in secondary healing, therefore it's called delayed. So the wound is left open for dressing and it's being dressed with pads and bandages. The wound is left for dressing and then later the wound is closed with sutures and that is the, the primary closure part of it. So delayed primary closure. The wound is first left open for dressing and then later on, the surgeon comes back and sutures. Sutures after a few days. After a few days, the, the patient is brought back into the OR or whatever. And the wound is closed. So you have first intention primary uh, healing where the wounds are closed immediately after the surgery. is uh, The surgeon has completed his operation. Or as soon as the mm, surgeon has completed his uh, our objectives, and then the wound is 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 closed with sutures. Secondary intention, uh, secondary healing. Then uh, in that uh, the wound is left open, and it heals on its own. And then third intention healing, where the wound is left open, but then later on, after some few days, the wound is closed by with sutures. Now let us look at the different phases. Let us look at the phases. Of, um, of wound healing. The phases of wound healing, you have the first phase, which is also the inflammatory phase. 
you have phase two, which is the proliferation phase. You all, and then you have phase three, which is the maturation phase. By duration, the first phase, the inflammatory phase, takes one to three days. Uh, the proliferation phase takes three days to three weeks. And the maturation phase they takes uh, is takes anyway after three weeks. So the duration of the inflammatory phase, one to three days, then three to three weeks, and then more than three weeks you have the maturation so these are the phases so meaning they happen in that sequence of wound healing so the first first you have the inflammation for the first three days and then and then after the three days up to three weeks you have the proliferation phase and then three weeks onwards then you have the maturation of the wound all right so what happens during the inflammation the inflammatory uh, uh, phase of the wound so during the first three days of the of, of wound healing you have hemostasis you have chemotaxis you have epithelial migration what else do we have we have the formation of fibrinous exudates or scars what else do we have we have the chronic the chronic wound becomes told so so sometimes because we have um, acute, you have wounds, right? You have wounds that heal very quickly, that, w that, that do not take long to heal. Then you have chronic wounds that last for weeks or years. So these chronic wounds are usually locked within the primary, uh, the, 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 within the inflammatory phase. So chronic wounds that seem not to heal after f weeks, after um, um, years, years on end, or weeks on end, or months on end, they are locked within the inflammatory phase. So chronic wounds become stalled, meaning they are arrested within the inflammatory phase. All right. The second phase of wound healing, which is proliferation, um what is what happens during that uh, that 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 phase what happens during the proliferation phase is you have the proliferation or meaning the the increase in number of the endothelial cells they proliferate they reproduce the increase in number increase in number of smooth muscle cells as well as fibroblasts fibroblasts uh we also have Formation of granulation tissue. Um, so those are the first two phases of wound healing. And the third phase of wound healing is maturation, which involves contracture of wound edges. So the wound edges, they begin to come together. So they, um, so the sky is formed and then the wound, the, 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 the edges, they begin to pull, to, they pull together. They pull to, towards the center. That is the contracture. And then you have the formation of the scar as well as scar remodeling. Okay, guys, that is it for wound healing and regeneration. Uh, next time, we'll look further into the phases of, of wound healing. We'll look deeper into deeper details of phase one, phase two, as well as phase three. So we'll look at the inflammatory phase in deeper details the proliferation phase as well as the maturation phase of wound healing all right guys thank you very much for watching uh, don't forget to uh, like subscribe and share this video with your colleagues and friends see you again in the next one